Last year, Eric Debay and friends released a flat earth mockumentary, if you will, called Level. Now, we obviously totally debunked it. Here is the full supercut for those episodes. Link will be in the description as well. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that Eric and friends are back. This time, they're going to the next level. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's Flat Earth Friday, Blinkist. Time is a precious commodity these days, isn't it? And I'm sure you're always thinking that there's never enough for you to read a certain book that you might be interested in reading. And if you could do that, it would certainly mean a more confident and knowledgeable you, wouldn't it? Well, there's an answer. The Blinkist app. Blinkist takes top non-fiction titles and puts them into 15-minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. You can then use Blinks to learn about topics like philosophy, history, science, or dive into psychology, health and nutrition, or personal growth. Blinkist gives you the knowledge you need in the time you actually have. You can use these Blinks to get inspiration, learn more about books you'd like to read next, and broaden your knowledge and get new perspectives. Now, I use Blinkist when I'm waiting at the school gates for my son to finish school. And I've moved on to The Body by Bill Bryson. And you know what? I've actually got the book itself, but I prefer the Blinkist version. Now, after that, I've got my eye on Prisoners of Geography by the brilliant Tim Marshall. That sort of stuff fascinates me. The first 100 people to click my link in the description are gonna get unlimited access for a week. That way you get to try it out and then you will get 25% off a full membership after that. Right, back to today's video, which is the first part of the next level takedown. We did it with Eric DeBay's first documentary and we're gonna do it again with this one. As before, it will be as thorough as I can make it and as before, it will also be in separate parts. This one is gonna be a longer video than usual, so get yourself comfy and get Get a cup of tea or coffee because it's going to be a good one. Let's skip the fancy intro and get stuck in. Here we go. The one thing globe believers need to understand is that you don't just take the spinning ball earth and flatten it out and put it back in the heliocentric model. Like it's just the only misfit planet and it's flat and the rest of the planets are round. No flat earther has ever said that. No flat earther will ever say that because it's not what we believe. The earth isn't a pancake floating in outer space. And I don't think I've ever said that you guys claim that it was. I know your stance. Anti-globe, basically. And you will never hear a flat earther say that. And if you would ever actually take the time to study it for yourself or hear a flat earther through, then you would find that it's much different and things would actually make more sense. Yes, I have done that extensively and it still makes no sense. They've got the narrative control to where anyone that goes to search for this, they're gonna see pancakes floating up in space, you know, and it turns people away. Or they see a snow globe. A snow globe out in the middle of space with water falling off the sides, and they're like, what is this? It turns them away. The mainstream agenda was to push their false narrative, all these hit pieces on flat Earth. In 2016, 2017, uh, th that was pretty much the end of the YouTube era, uh, where we could actually find real evidence, real, you know, content any search engine it's the algorithms are, are suited to their favor you're, you're going to see all the hit pieces you're going to see all the stuff that's there to debunk flat earth indeed that's where i come into it so it's just uh, it's almost impossible to get the real information youtube played their part in it and not just cherry picking which videos they wanted to show but deciding whether or not they wanted you to subscribe to somebody so on several occasions and with several different content creators i'd press the subscribe button to then find out several days or several weeks later that I couldn't find that, that content creator, assuming they'd either been deleted or they'd been censored beyond belief. A new flat earther here I see, and she's English. Interesting. I must check her out. There's a major campaign by Google and YouTube and all of these corporate uh, lying companies. Here he is, Santos! Whee! to discredit the Flat Earth. Why do they have that disclaimer under every video dealing with the topic of Flat Earth that it is an archaic, antiquated, outdated model that the ancients used to believe in? Because it is an ancient and archaic belief. Not a hard one, that. Of course, the ancients were stupid. They didn't know how to build Gothic cathedrals and they didn't know how to build cities and pyramids. 
The problem is people that think that flat earth is stupid think flat earth is stupid because they're thinking of a stupid flat earth. Wow, they're all out today, aren't they? No, I think flat earth is stupid because there is no evidence. And those that propagate it don't understand physics or earth sciences, but they pretend they do. They act confident. Now, what's that called again? Ah yes, Dunning-Kruger. And they ridicule and make fun of flat earthers. It's absolutely ridiculous. Since 2015, the content providers for flat earth have had a living hell. Martin Lickie, there's a blast from the past. Well, this guy's from Wales and he spends all of his time telling people that the earth is flat and that the mud floods happened. We have been ridiculed, we have been trolled, we have been censored beyond belief by YouTube. Uh, it's really difficult to get the truth out there. YouTube controls the algorithm. Who owns YouTube? Google. The, these are these big corporations that came in and said, the flat earth is getting way too big. People are finding this out. We don't want them to find this out. No, we don't want them being miseducated. People fall for it. That is clear. We can't let it happen. This will just completely destroy our agenda that we've worked so hard for. We're losing it because of our own technology that we created. So they had to get involved. Withholding information and knowledge is a form of control. Now, for new people coming into the subject, if you research Flat Earth, the Google um, analytic will give you government hate propaganda against the Flat Earth truth. Hey, I'm not employed by the government, and I don't hate. Hate is a strong word. Too strong. You know, I'm not happy that you guys spread this stuff, but hate? No. If you go to Google and try to find anything Flat Earth related, then the first thing that's going to pop up is the Flat Earth Society. And that is something that has absolutely nothing to do with this movement. I think everyone knows that the Flat Earth Society isn't serious. Why are they banging this drum? In fact, it's um, a completely made up organisation in order to deter anybody looking for some sort of truth. So that you'd first of all get to that page, you'd see these ridiculous accusations and this spinning disc illusion that's going upwards in space that I can assure you nobody believes in. If the globe model was as strong as they claim to be, then there wouldn't be so much concern with anybody talking about a stationary Earth model. Yes, there would, because you've all been fooled. And you have confidence in the tales that you've been told, the stories that have been spun. And then you spin those stories to others, others who may not have the scientific understanding to rebut you. And the cycle goes on and on. Now everything's fine in court until somebody walks in with a load of shit on you. Everything's fine until somebody out there has evidence that's going to prove you guilty. And that's when you start acting suspicious, that's when you start panicking, that's when you start putting con uh, damage control out there, which is inevitably what these bots are, what these trolls are on social media, and of course, the algorithms. This is just a new lie that was started in the 20s, and even before then, they weren't really teaching anything about the world and where we were, it was just common knowledge. Yes, knowledge that's backed up with science. One of the main arguments that globe believers come at you with is we've known for 2,000 years, Aristophanes figured it out with his sticks and shadows. Same old cack, David. Same old cack. Well, Aristophanes may or may not have been a real mathematician. He figured out the shape of the earth. That would have made him the Michael Jordan of mathematicians, but nobody ever mentioned him in a book until the mid-1900s. Actually, Pappus of Alexandria was a Greek author who lived from 190 to 250 AD, and he mentions Eratosthenes in his sixth book. What's crazy is I've talked to some elderly people and they've told me that back in their day when they were in school, they didn't even learn about people like Copernicus or Galileo. Everything's up for grabs at this point. People like Christopher Columbus and any other figure in history could be totally false or created just for some sort of agenda. What, to hide the shape of the earth? What's the end game there though? What benefit is it to anyone? This is everywhere. We found somebody in uh, Croatia. They said they were teaching flat earth through the 1930s. Most people think that this flat earth versus globe earth has been going back and forth for thousands of years. No, it has not. No, we've been laughing at Flat Earth for about 10 years. This is a brand new deception. They come up with these stories, these fictional stories, fictional characters, to reinforce that we live on a ball. All of our globe provers, Galileo, Aristophanes, Copernicus, 
The pictures of them show that they're masons, but I contend that we don't even know if they're real. All of our history is a lie. Is it though? The thing with all those scientists there that you mentioned, have you ever stopped and decided to read some of their work? Or are you parroting the belief that they were not real or they had an agenda taught to you by someone else? I've met people that said that they were taught Flat Earth in the early 1960s in school. They were taught Flat Earth and Globe Earth. And then it kind of just went away. I interviewed Ruth, a 102 year old woman back in February of 2020 and she was taught Flat Earth uh, in public school in Connecticut. Yeah, that was an awful video. It genuinely looked like you'd coached her beforehand. Shocking. Moving on. Knowing that there is a creator, absolutely. That is one of the main reasons to hide this. But, you know, at the same time, um, it's, it's nowhere in, near comparison when a billion people find out that there's more land. It's about hidden land. I think there's possible they could be hiding land in here somewhere with us. And I think that the Antarctica Treaty is very, very, very sinister and there must be something else going on. Sinister? The Antarctic Treaty is sinister? Have you read it, Martin? There is nothing in that treaty, not one thing that says you cannot go to Antarctica. They went really, really, really tough with their implementation of the, you know, the Antarctic Treaty and everything else, and just to keep people away from the truth. They didn't want people to know about more land. Another person who hasn't read the treaty either. Haven't we been fighting over land forever? Isn't that what always happens? Countries fighting over land, but not on the outskirts of Antarctica. Oh, no, no, no. No fighting there. Yeah, because it would make sense to fight over land that is immensely inhospitable and incredibly hard to get to. Perfect sense. Besides, that treaty didn't come into action until 1959. They're all in agreement. You can't go there. You can't explore any of it. Again, it doesn't say that. That treaty was in effect in 1959. It can't even be questioned until the year 2041. The longest lasting treaty uh, that all of the world signed on to at the same time and is still in place. It was 12 countries originally, David. Not all of them. Even now, not all of them are on the treaty. There's about 100 different companies that you can spend a lot of money to go on a little guided tour of just that peninsula, but all of those companies are owned under one umbrella. One person controls them all. They don't let anybody explore Antarctica. What person? Where's the evidence for that? We'll be a fucking international headline in about five minutes. <laughs> Australian Navy ship is facing our way. Bad boys, bad boys. Is it? The turret is turning our way. The turret's turning at us. Boy, we should hide Adrian in case they think we're not. Well, hang on. The Bass Strait is an area of water between Australia and Tasmania. So what? Tasmania is too far south now. Better inform all the residents and let them know that they're in a restricted zone. When people say, why the lie? One of the main answers is they're hiding more land. What if we can truly become free? The whole reason for this is because of more land. Because think about it, if there's more real estate, if there's more resources, natural resources, if there's more food for our starving children. Says the actual millionaire. If there's more space, more room for us to get away from the child sex trafficking. If there's places where we can go and other civilizations we can be a part of where they don't charge you for water, they don't charge you for free energy. They don't charge you for property taxes. Yeah, those civilizations out on that extra land, they're very hot on their property tax. We'll give them that. What if there is more land? Nobody can go explore Antarctica, period. Said no one ever. Because if humanity found out there's more land, then the heliocentric theory is gone. They can't start adding more <laughs> continents on the bottom of a ball. It's just, they, they wanted it silence right away. There is evidence out there through old maps, uh, namely the thousand-year-old Japanese Kawawashi map, which shows continents and lands outwardly of what they call the ice shelf or the ice wall. Oh, you mean the map that's an entire work of fiction? That map? 
You lot are a bunch of suckers, aren't you? So why are they teaching the globe model? Well, you see, the, the globe is a container, and it's a container of all the known land. The Jesuits and the Freemasons, they needed a new model because they wanted a new world order. Right now on a ball or in a snow globe, there's only seven continents. That's all there is, so everything is, is it's very limited. We have a limited supply. Indeed, and I can't help but think this is a major thing for you, Flat Earthers. Everything is finite, everything. And you can't accept that. It ruins your little bedtime story in a variety of ways, doesn't it? Resources are very scarce because the Earth is a globe, right? It's cut off, everything's cut off. If you open it up and there is more land, then there's plenty of resources. More land means more resources. Well, that's huge if they're hiding something like that. There's a scene in the Truman Show where Truman is like, I want to be an explorer when I get older. I like to be an explorer. Like the great Magellan. Oh, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. Of course, this is a fictional movie, but nevertheless, I don't agree with that either. There is so much more to explore on this planet. Imagine if there's like all these beautiful places to explore still and finding out that there's all this land, it just opens up the door for discovery again. Have you ever heard of the eyewitness testimony written in the books, The Iron Republic, The Smoky God, Worlds Beyond the Poles? In the late 1800s, there was a series of articles written in Florida Magazine about a politician that was tired of what was going on here, got a big ship and a crew, was exploring Antarctica, and he went, found a passageway through, and he popped out into the ocean, was lost for about a month. Finally, they found land with a city, and they pulled up, and it was a very advanced, quite different civilization, and a very friendly, and they stayed there, and they, he writes about all the experiences he had there. Again, another work of fiction. What if I said to you that there were many hundreds of thousands of years ago these sort of religious people that sort of had magic powers that can move things with their mind and they had weapons made of light and they lived in a galaxy far far away. That definitely happened. In the late 1800s they were talking about more land beyond Antarctica. Remember the word extraterrestrial means extra land. They're telling you that there's more land in here that they don't talk about. There could be more land in some of the oceans where it's just all blue on the map. Nobody knows. You're not cruising around on big ships or flying over it on planes and looking, you know? Nobody's out there charting anything. Yeah, because it's already been done, buddy. Have you heard of such a thing as no-fly zones? Yes, usually something put in place for political or safety reasons. For instance, you can't fly in certain areas near the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. Where does it say that? You can't just make a statement and then expect everyone to believe it. The reasons being is because there are lands there that um, we're not supposed to know about. Any evidence for these lands at all, Santos? They don't want those lands to be discovered. All these corrupt systems that are stealing money from us, kidnapping our children, um, just doing horrible things, uh, they rely upon the cattle staying on the ranch, the slaves on the plantation. That's why Flat Earth is the most important, the most important knowledge we can obtain. It's because there is more land. Don't look at us and say, go prove it. Isn't that a reasonable thing to do though? They won't allow us to go prove it. Oh, that bloody they. They're so awful, aren't they? We're not the lazy ones here. We're being restricted from going to prove this to you. Well, the last time you tried to prove something, it didn't end too well, did it? A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. And what a delightful way to end part one. There'll be four parts for this one, by the way. Another three to come in the next three months. Right, well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday, all done and dusted, all wrapped up in a nice, tight, little Flat Earth Friday next level box. Thank you so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do some, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and if you really, really enjoyed the video, hit that like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Blinkist for sponsoring today. Uh, remember the first 100 of you that click the link in the description will get unlimited access for a week to try it out and then 25% off a premium membership. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Misconception Mini. See you then.